Hi everyone and welcome back to Crafters Grove. Today I'm going to show you how to make some outdoor signs for your backyard or your front yard for whatever you want to do using scrapped wood. So this project actually costs us zero dollars and I'll talk about some tips on how you can also do this free project if you might not have these pieces lying around. So I started off this project by first figuring out what I wanted to write on the signs. That led me to know how many signs I needed and then trying out different font styles to figure out what font I wanted for the signs. Once I settled on a font style, I continued to write out what I wanted to appear on the signs in as many times as I needed and selected the ones that I liked the most so that I could use that as a starting template for the signs. So next we picked out some pieces of scrap wood that we no longer had a use for and roughly cut them down to shape. These were pieces from the old edition that were actually placed in the outdoor shed that we converted into an outdoor bathroom. They're not usable because they're rotted or they just don't fit any purpose that we need. They were all quite old pieces of wood and because of that they had a really nice aged look to them. Now what Stephen's been working on in the background is cutting these wood pickets. So we had uh, pieces of wood that range from maybe about one and a half inches to four inches wide and we cut those bigger pieces in half to form the pickets for the sign. So these are the sticks that we're then cutting um, into wedges at the bottom so that you can easily attach the sign and stick them into the ground. So what he's doing here is on the bottom of the pieces of pickets he's cutting half on about a 30 degree angle flipping and then cutting the other half on another 30 degree angle to form a spear that's going to easily wedge into the ground when it's hammered in. So at this point in the video you might be thinking well I can't do this project for free because I don't have any scrap wood lying around. Well if that's the case I have a few ideas for you where you can try to get some free wood to do this project. So if there's anybody doing renovations in your neighborhood, especially if they're doing the renovations themselves, they have to pay to get rid of everything from the house. So you might see if they have any scrap wood that they're willing to give to you. Uh, the other idea is you could go on a free giveaway site, like I've personally used Kijiji, and there's a lot of people giving away wood for free on these sites, uh, particularly pallets, and those can look quite nice and aged. And um, some communities have these community drop-off centers or recycle centers, sometimes they're called transfer stations, usually that's for garbage, but at the recycle centers they have places where you can drop off recycling for free and they sometimes have a little section with like used goods, sometimes they have these huge wood piles and usually these places let you take things for free because otherwise it's just going to have to be paid to be recycled or to be dumped somewhere. So that's another place to consider. These are also good options for finding used nails that people don't need, maybe even old paint. All these things are things that usually people don't use in their entirety and just have lying around. So once the wood was cut into rough shape, it was time to give it a wipe down and start applying the wording. So how I started was just freehanding uh, the letters based on the template that I've created using a pencil. This allowed me to trace the lines, but the pencil doesn't show after the project's done. I do find with these old pieces of wood, because the grain tends to go at different angles, not straight, it is hard to get a straight line. So I did use some painter's tape to help with that line. And I also find that my spacing is not good when I'm trying to do projects. So I'll often run out of room by the end before I finish writing out my word. So I did a little bit of a pencil template on the back of that piece of paper with all the blue writing on it and use that to help guide me to figure out where to put the letters so that all the lettering would fit. Next I had to figure out what color paint I wanted to use. So I had white available, this outdoor beigey paint, and black. Uh, just holding the cans up to the wood wasn't enough, so I'm doing a bit of a tester area to see what color works best. I'm just using some old um, paper that actually came out of the shredder to apply the paint. It's paper that yes would have been recycled but it's just a tiny bit of paper and that can go into the garbage with very little waste. 
So up top we have the beige and some white paint and finally some black paint. So I found the paint samples on the wood helped a lot, but I still needed to isolate the different colors to really get a sense of how they would look on the board. And really the white looks the best with the color palette on the board, so that's what we're going with. So the next step is tracing over your pencil line with the white paint using a paintbrush. If you can, try to hold the paintbrush like you would a marker to recreate the different thicknesses and thinning of the line as you would with that marker. I found after I painted on the flat surface, I did like placing it on a vertical surface because it did give me a different perspective of really what the sign's going to look like when you're seeing it in person. And then I started to fill in the lines and the mistakes or sort of gaps that I had from the thick paintbrush using a very fine paintbrush. So with painting on natural wood grain like this, you're naturally going to have gaps in the paint line where there's big grain gaps of the wood. So it's just up to you how much you want to paint over and how much you want to fill in to leave that sort of washed out look or make more of a dark, thick look with the paint. I found the smoother surface was much easier to paint on and produced much more perfect lines and perfect edging with the paintbrush. Um, but you know, it's not as interesting as flat, perfect wood. So choose your wood in terms of what effect you want to have and the overall aesthetic you want at the end. So now that the signs are all painted, it's time to go back to the cutting board. So for the this way sign, we really wanted it to be directional to show the guess what path to go down. So we followed a similar technique as we did with the pickets and that was finding the midpoint of the piece of wood and then from that midpoint cutting a 45 degree angle on each half so that it formed an arrow. And then really we just eyeballed the other cuts. I would just point to where I wanted the piece of wood to finish, Stephen would draw a line and then he cut the board. So the next step after all the signs were cut was to stick them onto the pickets. But because these are unevenly cut pieces of wood, finding the center isn't just a matter of measuring. So what I came up with is using a bit of parachute cord to find the midpoint in terms of weight and then use that as the spot to nail it to the picket. It's important to evenly distribute the weight of the sign onto the picket because that just makes it more likely that your picket will stay in the ground and won't topple over after you've hammered it into the ground. So because we were just using found nails or extra nails we had lying around, the nails were longer than the sign and the picket combined, which actually we found was a lot better for ensuring the sign stayed attached to the picket. So Stephen just had to create some space between the floor and the sign in order to hammer the nails in all the way and then hammered them down and against the picket so they weren't sticking out and causing um, a hazard. So here it is, the finished product. So we do plan on placing these around the property when we have jur gatherings so that people can independently make their way around the property. So we hoped you enjoyed this Crafters Grove video and tutorial. If you did, 
please ensure to subscribe and like the video and stay tuned for future videos from us. Bye!